Hello everyone, Deacon Michael Morris here. It's so good to be back with you doing Social Media Mondays with Mike, and now I'm a deacon, so it's a pleasure to be back within two months this summer to serve you as a deacon and to continue to reflect as we did during my pastoral year, reflecting on different topics. We did the Creed, I believe we did the Our Father, and now this summer I came up with the idea, we're going to do a summer with the saints. So we will look at a different saint each week and reflect on why they're important for the life of the church and how we could perhaps develop a devotion to them as well. First, I want to start out by saying why devotion to the saints is important. For a while, I was not personally interested in praying to the saints because I didn't really understand the purpose and I didn't feel like I was getting much out of it spiritually. But I knew it was important because it's what the church does all the time. So I asked God for the grace to show me why it's important. And slowly over time, God began to give me that grace and to show me that devotion to the saints is very important because their one goal is to lead us to Christ. So devotion to the saints isn't about worshiping the saint himself. It's about how did their life emulate virtue, the virtue of Christ, and how did they live the gospel, and then how can they lead us to Christ? So it's not about us uh, praising them, it's about us seeing them as icons of Christ, not idols. An idol would be uh, to make the saint something of worship, but to make them an icon means that they are showing us the way to Christ, that how we, we can become more like Jesus. So they're companions on the journey. They're like spiritual friends. I have a lot of friends at seminary that I share things with, and they help lead me closer to Jesus. Same thing with the saints. But the beauty of the saints is the church gives us the guarantee that if they were canonized as a saint, that means they're in heaven with the Lord and that they're able to intercede for us. So that's why devotion to saints is extremely important. So we're going to start with St. Joseph. St. Joseph has uh, been doing a lot for me personally lately. Uh, it started last year when I was in Omaha, Nebraska for Institute of Priestly Formation it was two months of uh, spiritual journeying and praying and classes teaching me how to pray in a deeper way. And they started out the summer by encouraging us to think of the two months as being in Nazareth with the Holy Family. So with Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. They wanted us to think of it as time spent away in a retreat going to Nazareth, learning the humility of the Holy Family and how their devotion, the Blessed Mother and St. Joseph's devotion to Jesus, their whole commitment of their whole lives is what we're meant to do as well. So I thought of that two months as being away in Nazareth. And it was kind of funny, I received in the mail a couple weeks into the program I received in the mail a novena book, so nine days of prayer, to St. Joseph. It was the year of St. Joseph that Pope Francis declared for the Universal Church. And I received this book from a random parish in the Diocese of Scranton that I had never been a part of, but they sent me this book. And I decided to pray with it. And it was excellent timing on God's part. I was very much led into a deeper devotion to St. Joseph in that two-month period. And then ever since then, I've been growing in much greater love and devotion of St. Joseph and why a devotion to him has been leading me closer to Christ. 
So I found that extremely important, and I thank God for it. And St. Joseph is showing me where he is involved in my life, and hopefully uh, I can help show you how he's involved in your life as well. So one of the books that I found extremely helpful to increase my devotion was Father Donald Calloway's book called The Consecration to St. Joseph. And it's a 33-day reflection book on St. Joseph. And then at the end of the 33 days, if you feel so called, you consecrate yourself to St. Joseph and uh, give your life in a refreshing way to him so that he can lead you closer to Christ. Uh, so I, I highly encourage this book, but uh, I want to just read from the litany of St. Joseph some of his virtues, and these are virtues that I think are extremely important for us and that we can grow in deeper devotion to St. Joseph. So I won't go through the whole litany, but here's a few things. Head of the Holy Family, pray for us. Joseph Most Just, pray for us. Joseph Most Chaste, pray for us. Joseph Most Prudent, pray for us. Joseph Most Courageous, pray for us. Joseph Most Obedient, pray for us. Joseph Most Faithful, pray for us. There's much more, and there's a lot of great uh, names for St. Joseph in this book. Uh, in the litany. Um, but all of these are based on Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapter 1, where we hear St. Joseph is, uh, becomes aware that his uh, future spouse, the Blessed Mother, is pregnant. And he knows that he's not the father. So you know, he's confused as what to do. Well, this book, interestingly, suggests that, well, perhaps it wasn't because he was scandalized by thinking maybe the Blessed Mother was with somebody else, but rather he was in such great awe of the fact that God was acting in the Blessed Mother's life that he didn't even feel worthy to approach the mystery. And I think there might be something to this, because I think St. Joseph, from the very beginning, trusted Mary. He trusted her word when she said to him, I'm pregnant, but it's because of the Holy Spirit. I think St. Joseph trusted her in that moment, and he probably was in such great awe of the mystery that he didn't feel worthy to approach it. So that's why he wanted to quietly divorce her. But then that's when the angel visits him and says, do not be afraid to take Mary into your home. This is important because St. Joseph is a son of David. He's a descendant of the great King David from the Old Testament. And that's important because the prophets in the Old Testament said, the Messiah is going to come from David's line. A king will be put on David's throne, and he will reign forever. So David was centuries before, and now one of his descendants, as promised through the prophets, is the Messiah, is the Christ. And here we are 2,000 years later in Carbondale, Pennsylvania, Worshipping that Christ, worshipping that Lord, Jesus, because he is the king. He has taken his throne, just as the prophets foretold. And of course, that throne is in heaven with the Father and the Holy Spirit. So St. Joseph, he was with a great mystery. He was being challenged. But as the litany says, he was a man who was chaste. With, he did not have relations with the Blessed Mother, but he took care of the family. He took care of Jesus. He raised him. He took care of the Blessed Mother. He was prudent because 
Herod wanted Jesus to be killed, but he prudently and patiently waited for the Lord to reveal to him when to act. He was courageous. They went into Egypt not knowing anybody, and they were in fear, I'm sure. But he courageously went into Egypt. He was just. And that was, it says that in Matthew's Gospel, it says, Joseph was a righteous man. He was just. So he's a great figure for us to see as being worthy of emulating, being worthy of a devotion. But again, not because it's for his sake, but because we're worshiping Jesus. He leads us closer to Christ. He wants us to know his son better, his, his foster child. He wants us to know about the beauty of the life that he offers us. So this is just a little flavor of the devotion to St. Joseph that I wanted to share with you. And we will conclude with a brief word, a brief prayer to the Blessed Mother, who is the spouse of St. Joseph. And we ask for her intercession as she is the mother of God and the mother of the church. And today is the feast of the Blessed Mother, mother of the church. So we ask for her spouse's intercession, and we ask for her intercession as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God bless you, and we'll see you next week.